But let's get back to how to estimate these models. What we looked at last was to look at the linear regression model like this. And again, we have some observations. We have rows here of the F relative to the most recent observation and stepping backwards in time. Then we have, we're going to make an estimate of th theta at each time point. So we want to estimate theta n when you have n observations. And then we have the residuals out here. So that's the same old story you can say. If we do the ordinary least squares estimator, we call that from last week, we define this matrix here as xn. As the design matrix, we have xn transpose, xn, the whole thing inverse, and then multiply that on xn transpose and yn. So that's the estimate that we got from last week. Now, if we look at this, we have one part here that we invert, and then we have another part out here. So what we want to do, as I said before, we want to make to get to a point where we can update and make a new estimate every point in time. We get a new observation, we want to get a new estimate, but we don't want to recalculate everything. We don't we prefer not to have to establish this matrix just with one row more and one row more for each observation that you get. That means that you're just increasing the amount of memory you need. And if you're doing some embedded uh, system, you what you want to, also for real-time application, you want to do something as the calculation time is predictable. In this case, it will just increase and increase and increase. So we look at this formulation where we have theta n as an fn inverse, fn representing x transpose x, and hn that represents x transpose y. So if we look at this fn, what we have is that it actually is a sum like what we have here. And let me just explain how this sum look like. Because we have this matrix here. We want to take that transpose and pre-multiply that on the other matrix there. So the way I do when I do calculation of multi uh, multiplication of matrices is that I write it up sort of like this. And then what we have to focus on is what do we get where? So the bottom row here is F transpose of 0. And the top row is F transpose of minus parentheses n minus 1. Likewise, in this matrix over here, what we have here is we have a column vector here that is f of 0. And the first column here is f of minus parentheses n minus 1. And then we have all the others in between. We need to make the product of these two. Now, when you look at this, there's two wa ways of doing the product here. You can take the first column with the first row. Look at all those. Or you can take. You can say the first column here with the first row there, or last in this case, and I pointed that. And if we do that, then we can easily see that what we have here is the product of F0 with F transpose of 0. We do that matrix first, and then we add for all the other time points. So that's what comes in here. This becomes the sum from time equal minus n minus 1 here to 0 of f of t, or maybe I should use, have used j, times f t transpose. So it's the outer product of those two. That's what I have down here, just with a different indexing. And you can do the similar thing, look at that, for h. So then we have a solution. The prediction here are very similar to what it did in the linear regression model last week. The prediction is easy. You just take the f of l corresponding to the time you want to predict and the most recent estimate theta hat at time n. Now, the variance of this thing is also similar to what we looked at last week, namely we have to look at the 
the sign matrix here, x, t, multiply on x to get the measure of uncertainty here, how good is the estimated parameters, that gives you the scaling of that, and then you pre and post multiply by what is actually the, the place that you want to make predictions. Remember the thumbret, trumpet shape, so how far away from the ex mean value of the predictors are you actually trying to make predictions. That's what we get here to the what time L that you want to look at. So the prediction interval is again very much the same as what we looked at before. We need to look at the expected value plus minus a quantile in a T distribution compared to how many degrees of freedom we have for the residuals. And then we multiply that by the standard deviation. And that's the expression that we have up here from up the just the square root of what we have up here. So that's basically how we have it. P is, as always, the number of parameters that we estimated. And we're good to go. Now, what I said is that we want to get to a point where when we get a new observation, we don't have to redo everything. So based on s what we know as a given point in time, we need to figure out how to get to the next point in time when we get a new observation, how to get a new estimate of theta in that case, without redoing everything. So remembering what f is, it's just a lot of outer products. And remembering that each time we just add something, what we do is that we add an extra row in the design matrix. And if you look at what we did over here, we basically just to have, we add an extra column. Let me write it. What we do is that we add something that was a little bit older than what we had up before. So we, we add something out here, that is f of minus n. And we also add that on top up there, f of minus n. That's the row that we need to add. And we have the outer product of that and add that to the sum. That's how we get f n. The update of HN is a little bit difficult, uh, different. We get the new observation here, and then we take the previous one here. But then if we go back a couple of slides to the estimator down here, what, what happens now is that all these previous ones that we had here, they are no longer corresponding to the same Y. So when we go to observation N minus, now N is one more we need to shift L, our f of minus j, we need to shift that one step backwards in time. And that's what we do by pre multiplying by, by the inverse of L. Remembering L gives you one step forward in time, multiply by the inverse, steps backwards in time. So that's what we do here, and then we solve appropriately. Now, one thing to always keep in mind, I know you know it, but I want to repeat it, is f has to be invertible. So if you do linear regression, simple linear regression, you need to have at least two observations to do that, preferably a few more. So wait by not calculating the estimate of theta until we have a number of observations, just to make sure that things are numerically stable. <laughs>